Only one problem. Muhammad wasn't supposed to die. Allah had promised him. And then there was the messianic problem. Yeshua had raised men from the dead, and Christ himself had not died, according to Allah. Remember the night's journey? All of the prior prophetic big shots, Adam, Abraham, Moses, and Jesus, were all alive, joining Islam's hallucinogenic prophet in the temple that wasn't there for a prayer and a glass of milk. Muhammad was supposed to be better than all of them. Bukhari. Abu Bakr came from his stolen house at Asun on a stolen horse. He dismounted and entered the mosque, but he did not speak to the people till he entered upon Asia and went straight to Allah's apostle, who was covered with a stolen Yemenite cloth. He uncovered the prophet's face and bowed over him and kissed him and wept, saying, Let my father and mother be sacrificed for you. Allah will never cause you to die twice. As for the death which was written for you, it has come upon you. It's telling that Baker bowed over him. The spirit that had made Baker rich and powerful had been Muhammad's, not Allah's. Baker's willingness to sacrifice his father and mother to save the soul of his fallen comrade is also telling. The first Muslims had been corrupted to the point that they had willingly and gleefully killed their closest relatives, and Muhammad had never given Muslims a plan of salvation. They lack a rational solution to the problem of sin, even today. There is no atoning sacrifice to accept or to perform, to obtain forgiveness, and thus come into the presence of a holy God. But then again, that's not a problem for Islam. Their God is anything but holy. To body, when the prophet died, Umar stood up threatening the people, saying, Some of the hypocrites allege that the messenger of Allah is dead. I swear by Allah that he is alive, not dead. By Allah the prophet will return, and he will go after those who are spreading lies about him. He will cut off the hands and feet of those who claim that he is dead. He will crucify them. Sorry, pal. He was certifiably and undeniably dead. And not a moment too soon. Bukhari. When Umar was talking to the people, Abu Bakr said, Sit down, Umar. But he refused. So the people came to Abu and left him. Bakr said, To proceed, if you used to worship Muhammad, then Muhammad is dead. But if any one of you used to worship Allah, then Allah is alive and shall never die. Allah said, Muhammad is no more than an apostle, and indeed apostles have passed away before him. This is recorded in Quran 3, 144. By Allah, it was as if the people never knew Allah had revealed this verse before Abu recited it. Umar said, When I heard Bakr, my legs could not support me, and I fell down, declaring that the prophet had died. Abu Bakr just confirmed what I have been saying from the very beginning. Muslims used to worship Muhammad. Not out of respect, mind you. They worshipped Muhammad for the same reason they would come to worship Allah. They feared him. They knew good Muslims would kill them the moment they stopped. And let's not forget... Islam had its reward. Jihad became holy, and booty had been made lawful and good. Islam's first historian paints the drama like this. Tabari. Bakr saw that Umar would not listen. He went forward. I swear by the Lord of the Kaaba that Muhammad is gone. Those people who formerly worshipped Muhammad must know that the deity you worshipped is dead. Those who formerly worshipped Allah must know that Allah is still alive and immortal. In death, Muhammad had given birth to the God he had conceived in life. They were separate and distinct for the first time. Bukhari it was mentioned in the presence of Asia that the prophet had appointed Ali as successor by will. She said, Who says so? I was with the prophet, supporting him against my chest, when he expired. I didn't hear anything. So how do the people say he appointed Ali as successor? 
Aisha had never forgiven Ali when, after her little indiscretion, he had told Mohammed, Women are plentiful. You can always exchange her for another one. Bukhari, I asked Abdallah, did the Prophet make a will? He replied, No. I asked, How come? Because Satan had deceived his Prophet. But his promise of eternal life was as useless as his promise of virgins for jihadists. Umar and Baker were at their wits' end, to be sure, but so was Ali. He craved the power others were swooshing in to grab. Before the body was cold, they were assembling their allies. To body. Zubair drew his sword, saying, I will not put it back until the oath of allegiance is rendered to Ali. When this news reached Abu Bakr and Umar, the latter said, Hit him with a stone and seize the sword. Recognizing that Islam had been Muhammad's ticket to babes, to booty, and to power, the boys were ruthless. To body. Fatima, Muhammad's daughter, and Ali, Muhammad's adopted son and Fatima's husband, came to Bakr demanding their share of inheritance of the messenger. They demanded Muhammad's land in Fadak and his share of Kaibar's tribute. But Bakr was unmoved. He had sacrificed his six-year-old daughter to make sure no one would cheat him out of what Muhammad had stolen. Fatima shunned him and did not speak to Bakr until she died. Ali buried her at night and did not permit Abu Bakr to attend her burial. This spat over money was not without consequence. It caused the rift that separated Sunni from Shiite. The scam that had been conceived to enrich its profit had split over booty. How poetic!